I was recently at a party organized by my art teacher. Talking to all the artists there, I was surprised to see how many were completely refraining from posting their art online, for fear of their style being copied. But AI has a fatal flaw, called adversarial examples, one that the tool Glaze 2.0 is gloriously exploiting. With Glaze 2.0, you can freely post your art online without having to worry about AI mimicking your style. As an AI researcher, I have very good reason to think that these kinds of tools are here to stay. In this video, I'm going to demo how to use this Glaze 2.0 and explain how it works a bit more in detail since I work in AI research. I'll tell you what the flaw is in AI that Glaze is exploiting. And don't worry, it's not going to be complicated. And finally, I'll explain why my prediction is that these kinds of tools are here to stay. So first of all, if you're an artist, you're most likely aware of the AI art threats and that there are some people out there who will train AI art models specifically on your art to generate hundreds and hundreds of images that could have been made by you. The site Mid Library is a good example of this. Enter the heroes over at the University of Chicago. They have designed a tool that you can use on your images before posting them to the internet that modifies them in a way that is mostly imperceptible to the human eye, but will completely ruin attempts at copying your style. Without further ado, I'm going to quickly show you how easy it is to use this tool. And if you stick to the end of the video, I'll show you why this kind of tool is very promising for the future and should remain available. So what you want to do first is just go on the Glaze uh, website and you're going to see something here called Glaze 2.0. You can go for more, more info if you want, if you're interested. In order to download it, you just have to go down the, to here and you choose the, re, the version that's right for you, either Mac or Windows. And for me, it's Windows. So you click on this and it starts up the download. It, it actually takes a long time because it needs to install a bunch of deep learning libraries, etc. So it's like two gigabytes, depending on your connection, it might take a long time or not. And then once it's uh, downloaded, uh, what you want to do is just so you want to just extract the folder to wherever you want, wherever feels right in your file system. And then uh, inside of the extracted folder, you're just going to have the app here uh, that's on Windows on Apple. I assume it's going to be the same and you can just double click and it's going to open it up for you. All right. And then you just have this really easy interface. So first you get to select your image. I'm just going to use like the, the thumbnail from last video I made. Uh, this one where I was doing a little drawing and then you can choose the intensity of the modifications to your images If you put this to high your image style your style is going to be more hard to copy uh, by AI But you also have more likelihood that the changes to your image are going to be visible uh, So for me, I just set this to defaults and then render quality is how much time you're willing to invest to get better uh, protection. For me, I just set it to the lowest because my computer is an absolute uh, travesty. It just doesn't work well. It's like nine years old. And so the fact that this works on my computer, uh, which has no GPU or anything, uh, just shows that there's no excuse for you not to be using uh, this, this kind of thing to protect yourself against AI uh, targeting your style. And then last thing, you get to choose where you want to save the image. And for me, I'll just save it to uh, the folder for today's video. And then you just hit run and it starts running. And in a little while, it's going to tell me like, oh, uh, there's 20 minutes left. Uh, and then you see the time going down. And when it's done, it's going to save your image to the folder that you've specified. So this is really easy to use. And I guess I'll see you guys on the other side where we can compare the image uh, before and after glazing. See you. All right, now that we've seen how easy, how mind-blowingly easy it is to use this tool, even for someone who doesn't know anything about AI, I just want to get into a little bit of explanation of how the glaze method works. And mostly I've just read the paper and, and yeah, I've gained an understanding of how it works. There's a little bit of innovation in the glaze method, but really the basic idea is something called adversarial examples in the world of AI. And I'll explain what they are very quickly. So first of all, in order to copy, generative AI must perceive your images. Although most AI visual perception systems are inspired by the brain, AI doesn't perceive the same way as we do as humans. We can exploit that 
by creating images that AI will perceive in a completely different way than humans do. For instance, by adding an imperceptible modification to this image of a cat, we can make the AI see it with 100% certainty as a picture of a boat. So we can fool the AI by using this fact that perception mechanisms in AI are not the same as in the brain. Based on this, can you guess how glaze works? Basically, it begins by using a somewhat old AI technique called style transfer to create a new version of your image with a different style. For instance, here's style transfer applied to the Mona Lisa to make it a bit more abstract. Then, it turns your image into an adversarial example that'll fool the AI into looking at this image but seeing this one. Now, that the glazing process has been applied. Humans look at your image and they see it in your style, but AI looks at it and sees it in a completely different style altogether. It is the same as the cats and boat situation, except it's with differing styles. So here's why I think these tools are gonna be around forever. They mention in the glaze paper that they don't think the current version is future-proof, but they also mention that none of the attacks that have been made against glaze so far have worked. It is robust against generation being done with a different model than the one the glaze was meant for. So that means if you prepare a glaze that's meant to fool, for instance, mid-journey, that glaze is also going to fool every other model out there. And that means that future models that are created are very likely to also be weak to the glazes that were produced on the models that exi exist today. Uh, it's also robust against JPEG corruption, against blurring of the image, against addition of Gaussian noise. And this is all very interesting because that means that someone who wants to target your art can't just apply modifications to the image and get rid of the, the, the glaze effects. No matter what you do to the image, it's most likely that it becomes poison for the AI in training. And then they did something in the paper, which is to explicitly train on glazed image to learn to overcome the glazing. And even that doesn't work. So this is really very robust and very strong. Uh, it's a very strong protection that you would be applying to your image. And the more meta reason why I believe that these kinds of tools are going to be around forever is that, as I mentioned, they rely on something called adversarial examples. And AI researchers have known about adversarial examples and tried to fix them since over 10 years ago. It seems like one of these things that are just built into AI and that we can't get rid of. So in my opinion, Glaze and other similar tools are here to stay. And finally, the authors of the Glaze paper mentioned the following at the end of the paper. While we have not yet observed any successful attacks against Glaze, we are continuously exploring design improvements to further enhance the robustness against potential future countermeasures. And this has likely led to the present version 2 of Glaze, which is much more robust against the newer version of the AI art models and produces less noticeable modifications to images and also works faster. So I highly encourage all of you guys who are artists to use Glaze in all your artwork that you post online. And especially the younger artists out there, consider this a beam of hope uh, for your future in arts because even people on the AI side are working to make it possible for you to, to fulfill your dreams of making art. So what do you think about this tool? Do you agree that it's here to stay? Let me know everything in the comments. And if you're interested in more videos like these, you can subscribe to the Artpost AI channel. And lastly, if you wanted to support the channel, uh, you can check out the segments that's about to start. And if you're interested, you can click the link in the description. And I guess I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.